The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the June 3rd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We do not make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. However, it's just past 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you are listening live, we'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in and you're listening between 8 and 9, you can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And, of course, inside our Tigers, then will any and every ping will do. I'll make this show as pertinent as I can for you. If you are listening at the normal time slot on Monday, we'll be back to a normal programming out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got the uh, U.S. equity futures trading lower. Dow's off 147, NASDAQ 139, S&P's off 28 points, or the S-Mini, should say, and the Russell 2000 is off about 9 points. It's 1% for the NASDAQ, and we'll certainly focus in on that as we begin ripping the markets apart. Over in Asia last night, a bit of a mixed bag. In the Shanghai and the Nikkei finish higher. Uh, they're both in A to B equal CD patterns. I think the Hang Seng may have formed the uh, top out there. And if we take a look over in Australia, the Australian 200 finished up about nine tenths of a percent or 62 points. Uh, the FTSE is closed, um, you know, part of the Jubilee out there, but the DAX is up six points, so basically flat. Gold is down two bucks, trading out at 1869. Silver's up 21 cents, 2248 is the print there. Platinum's up a few bucks. Natural gas is up 16 pennies, trading at 865. Lights, Lights Recruit is down nine cents. She's trading at 116.76. 30 year trade Treasury is basically, it is flat out there. It's right out at 138.23. So what does all that mean? Well, let's go take a look at my little market update chart. We'll just do a summary, and then we'll do a, a deep dive. And so here we've got uh, some of the main markets out here just to give us a feel for what's really going on. So if we take a look at the ES Mini, what you'll see is, so it should be no surprise to any of us out here that we're seeing a bit of a pullback. Why? Because prices run into right into resistance. What kind of resistance? Well, you've got descending trend line resistance. Those are those yellow diagonal lines. We're looking in the upper left-hand panel out there. And you have the top of its daily profile. And the top of the daily profile is 40, 37, 12. Um, now, obviously, price is well above that. And if you were together with me yesterday, we said that there was a new profile that was attempting to form. We wouldn't get a, a confirmation of that until 601, and we did get a confirmation of that. So now you've got a new profile that's below price that is a bullish signal. We have the same thing on a new profile that formed inside the Russell 2000. It's not shown here on this set of charts. So price is up at resistance. Is that the sell area? Could be. Um, a little bit difficult with the spot volatility still below its 50-day exponential moving average. Now, if at day's end, or let's say at uh, 1, 10 in the afternoon, you've got the spot volatility trading above 27.16, then then uh, certainly the ES Mini should at least go target, I would say. Its, its target would be at least the top of that new profile, which would be 40.37. We don't have those conditions right now, but I want to be able to try to make this show as pertinent at 8, 10 in the morning as it would be at 1, 10 in the afternoon. So we have talked about the spot volatility. So if we take a look at the NQ, it too is traded up in resistance. Now, so it's dealing with significant resistance. What does resistance mean? Where the sellers are located. How do we know sellers are located there? Well, that's the cool thing about the TAS market profiles. They identify for exactly where buyers are sitting, exactly where sellers are sitting. And then typically that's a range where you'll find a third 
uh, line that is the center of the profile, where both buyers and sellers believe that their price is fairly valued with inside that range. Well, in the case of the NQ, it has a bearish structure daily and weekly profile. What I mean by that is if the bottom is where buyers are at, the top is where sellers are at, the center is where buyers and sellers, we assume it's like 50-50 ratio there. If that line is closer, the center line that is, is closer to the top than it is to the bottom, then we have a larger congestion band of sellers, and they reside from a daily standpoint between 12 6 22 and 12 9 95. The weekly uh, uh, chart, it's between 12.603 and 12.973 out there. The high so far today has been uh, 12.945. So the NQ trading right up into resistance. So seeing futures pull back as we speak right now to 8.11 in the morning, it, it, anybody would have looked at these charts and said, yeah, that is where price should find resistance. So we're in those resistance bands. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, it is trading a bit higher today, but it is trading below both its weekly and its daily profile. But it has this little trend line support level out there. So right now, it's just a, uh, I, did I say trade below the daily profile? Uh, let me correct that. There is a new daily profile formed a few days ago. Price is trading below the bottom of the weekly profile, but above the top of the daily profile. Where's the daily profile? Great question. 101 28 is the level. If price closes below 101.28, um, we're probably headed uh, lower out there. But that's not the condition we have at the moment. If we take a look at Goldilocks, talk about markets getting back to resistance levels. Well, gold made its way back to the top of its daily profile, again, the top of the profile where sellers reside. 1879 is the top of that profile, the high. 1878.60. You got to love how this stuff works. Now, what gold is also trying to do is break out above a short term trend line out there. But really, what gold needs to do to prove itself, and when I say prove itself, prove itself that it wants to make its move to the 1900 level, the top of the weekly profile, you've got to see a close above 1879. So, not a surprise that gold has found resistance. Now, silver hasn't, right? So, gold's trading lower, silver's trading higher this morning. Well, if we take a look at the profile areas out here, silver's not trading into any resistance levels out here. It was just dealing with the center of its weekly profile, which price is above right now. That's a short-term uh, bullish signal. And as long as price remains above 22, 26, what silver should do is target the top of the daily profile. And that's up at the 22.76 level. Lightspeed crude is trading above a prior swing point. That's at 116.43. Price right now trading at 117.08. Gold, or silver, I'd say silver. Lightspeed crude. A black gold, Texas tea, did form a nice shooting star candle out here on um, May the 31st. That triggered, you don't see it on this set of charts out here, but that triggered what I refer to as a Rhodes momentum indicator topping pattern out there. Now, what price is doing, it's trading above support. Um, or resistance, I should say. The resistance being the top of its daily profile. You can see that there. What you don't see is the oscillator and change line. But I can share with you that price is trading above that. So what we really have out here, we have a topping signal with resistance being the high of that shooting star, 119.98. Price closes above that. That tells you that price's intent is to move higher out there. Because we have a valid topping signal, but we have support being held out here, the overall signal for Lightspeed Crude is neutral. If we take a look at natural gas, it's really a neutral-ish type signal as well, although not as neutral as uh, Lightspeed Crude. Why? Because in the case of natural gas, it's trading below its oscillator and change line. But look, it's above its daily profile. It's got a little rising trend line that it's held. It's got a TD9 count top. That's why I spent a little time there. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is Steve Rhodes. It's 8.14 in the morning. If you're listening live at 1.14, thanks so much for doing that. Give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So 818 in the morning, we got the Dow Equity Futures down 129, uh, NASDAQ Futures off 132, S&P Futures down 25, and the Russell's off 7. So we spent that first segment kind of getting a, a sense of the day, a bigger picture by taking a look at daily, weekly profiles and so forth. So so we're kind of set here. So now what we want to do is go drill down into the uh, intraday time frame chart. So to do that, we're going to switch over to my eight panel multi time frame uh, charts out here. The biggest, largest time frame that we're looking at here is the daily time frame and that's in the upper left hand panel so we've really covered that with price getting up to the resistance level of the top of its daily profile i don't have the weekly profile shown on the daily chart here i can't do that with my white background charts i can on the black background chart so we know that price in the nq is up at resistance level so that then takes us to a five hour time frame chart out here now the five hour time frame chart has a confirmed roads momentum indicator top i'm going to go ahead and expand out this chart out here so we've got a confirmed roads momentum indicator top Price moving higher, doing less relative energy. Bearish reversal candle that forms right here. We get a bearish engulfing candle, a three river evening star. Price right now trading below the it's, uh, it's green oscillator and change line. When you're below a green oscillator and change line, it says a further retracement is likely. Well, where would that further retracement be? Turns out that as we speak right now, the NQ for its five hour time frame, 300 minute time frame, has formed a new profile. And it is below price, which is a bullish message out there. So that is something to think about. That doesn't mean that price can't pull back and test or even close below 12,693, but that should be level one support. If price were to close below 12,693, then the price target would be between 12,492 and 12,593. Now those, that's a bullish structured profile. Again, price, with price above a profile when it forms, that is a bullish message. Okay, so we keep that in mind, and then we start drilling down to other time frame charts. What's the message of the two hour chart? So the two-hour chart also has a confirmed roads momentum indicator top. In its case, the bottom of its profile is at 12,492. So it's trading below the oscillator and change line. That is another potential price target there on a continued move lower. But let's continue moving on. Let's go take a look at the 60-minute chart. What do we have with the 60-minute chart? We have a TD nine count bottom that has formed. It will complete at 9 a.m. I Meaning you could see a flush lower between now, which is 8:20, and 9 a.m. This is an hourly time frame chart. Um, actually, I take that back. It, this, this is a TD9 count. So this is where you're going to get some information, right? We took a look at the five-hour and the two-hour charts out there. 
And they suggest there's a possibility of price moving lower. That signal would really come from now the 60-minute chart because as we came on the area at 8 o'clock, it was the bar following bar number 9 that did identify that TD9 count bottom. That says that its key threshold level of support, and it's on a closing basis, not on an intra time frame basis, the 60-minute chart we're looking at, a 60-minute close below 12, 727.25 is going to suggest lower price and going to suggest the price targets that we just looked at on the 120-minute chart and the five-hour chart. So now we've got a bottom pattern on 60. What do we have on the 30? Not much. We have price trading below the uh, bottom of its uh, profile. Uh, we don't have any kind of a TD9 count uh, uh, out here. We don't have a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. We don't have an A to B equals CD to the downside. That's completed. So the 30-minute chart right now for you and I is kind of uh, just leave it off to the side. It's not it's not providing us with much information. If we look at the 15-minute chart, not providing us with, well, I take that back. There's, there's a piece of information. The 15 and the 10-minute chart are the ones that are providing us with great information with regard to whether or not any rally is going to stick out here. What I mean by that so if I open up the 15-minute chart and you take a look at this oscillator and change line, you can see that it has acted as resistance. In fact, as uh, during this uh, 8 to 8 to 22 uh, time frame out here, we've seen price get up and test and reject that red oscillator and change line. That is currently printed out at 12,764. So what do you think? Two closes above the oscillator and change line for a 15-minute time frame, do you think that would be sending you a signal? Well, the answer is yes. It would be sending you a signal that we now have a change in character out here and of course uh, resistance out there would be 12,793 and then final resistance would be 12,842 so that oscillator and change line very key uh, and folks I teach you how to uh, create that uh, just uh, if you sign up for Mastering Probability, there's a number of workshops out there that cover most of the, all the tools, actually, that we're taking a look at here. So it'll be worthwhile for you to check that out for at least uh, 29 days. doesn't cost you really anything to do that. Here's the 10-minute time frame chart. It's oscillator and change line just as pertinent. Uh, we've seen a couple of uh, one bar closes above that. For example, here at about 6 o'clock in the morning, that was uh, uh, the spring. The, uh, yeah, that was this morning. One bar close above it, back below. So we have that Stevie two bar rule out here. In fact, that two bar rule is in play right now. So as we came to the 820 time frame, remember this is now a 10 minute chart out here. You did get a close above that oscillator and change line. Of course, price is right now back below that level. Uh, but if we do, and this bar here does not get a close till 830. So we've got seven minutes. But if we do get a close above that oscillator and change line, that's going to suggest we should see a rally to 12789. And above that, 12,823. So we'll come back to this at some point in time during the show. So by the end of the show, but I'm giving you what the uh, you know what what you should be taking a look at. And the Nasdaq, the NQ, knowing that it's up at both weekly and daily resistance. Here's where we really want to be able to get our signals from. Uh, Five-minute chart shows a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. The 10-minute chart, by the way, that was a TD9 count bottom, as well as a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom signal. Price now back above that oscillator and change line. So, again, a close above that is going to suggest that we continue. At least this, at least the morning rally continues to move higher, and it could be uh, uh, more than that. Remember, that spot volatilnix is below its 50-day exponential moving average. So, speaking of the spot volatilnix, let's go take a look at the ES Mini. See what its chart patterns are showing us. This will take just a moment here to populate. And again, we're going to take a look at the daily time frame. The daily time frame, upper left-hand corner, what we know is that this is trading in a resistance, the top of its daily profile. So we go from there to see if there's any kind of topping signals on the other charts. Well, let's expand out the five-hour chart. What do we have here? Not much. We do not have a topping. Yeah, like I can draw an A to B equals CD pattern. Most certainly, and you've got that dark cloud cover. So I'll take that back. There is a topping pattern that is out here. Uh, price right now is trading inside its profile. So the support level here for the five-hour time frame is at 40, 90, 75. Jot that down on your pad of paper. The two-hour time frame chart, what do we have out here for signals? We have wave number seven. That's letter G. That formed the top. That was at 6 o'clock in the morning on May the 30th. Now we just have what looks like kind of a uh, sideways consolidation that's taking place. This would suggest that price could easily pull back to the 4083 level. That's coming from the two hour time frame chart. If we look at the 60 minute chart, remember on the NQ we had a TD9 count bottom. Here we do not. All we have is price pulling back, testing the bullish structured area of the 60 minute profile. That says if we see two consecutive closes below 4142, that's going to tell us about price moving to lower ground. So although you don't have a bottom pattern out here, like a TD9 count, like we did on the NQ, the 60-minute chart here for the ES has pulled back to a level of support. 
bullish structured profile. So this really is kind of lining up and supporting what we were looking at inside that NQ chart, should that TD9 count, in fact, take hold. The 30-minute chart, which had, um, when we looked at the NQ, had no relevance. That's not the case here in the ES Mini. The ES Mini has a TD9 count bottom. It's TD9 count bottom forming another bar following bar number nine. So this suggests that we should see the ES Mini should make a rally up to the 4164 level. Now, 4164 is the center of its bullish structured profile for the 30 minute basis. Now look, between now and maybe uh, you know 9.30 or so, there could be a new profile that forms, I don't know. But we use the data that we've got, bullish structured profile. If it's only a counter trend move to the upside, price will find resistance at that 4164 level. So if you're trading above that, price is likely targeting 4171 or 4177. That's coming to the 30 minute time frame chart for the ES Mini. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So it is Jobs Friday, and it's uh, those uh, numbers come out uh, momentarily. Maybe they're out uh, as we speak right now. We're seeing the uh, – well, let me just switch over here to a different screen just so you can see what uh, activity is inside the uh, futures markets out here. So really pertinent to uh, to be able to do today's show. Now, uh, uh, Stevie's getting ready for a super soaker event. As you know, I live on Delray Beach, and uh, we've got uh, all kinds of tropical – storms or what have you and so doing the show early so that i can uh, run over to uh, naples and pick up my 94 year old mother-in-law and bring her over here so she's not dealing with the uh, storms over there you know it's great to be 94 years old 
and have all your faculties. I mean, she's sharp as a whip out there. Well, the one faculty is the hearing, uh, which means, you know, she gets to turn that off uh, on the uh, drive back and forth. So I talk, but uh, I'm not sure if she actually listens or not. But in any event out here. So right now we have equity futures that uh, are off of their session lows. But you and I were already taking a look at signals before right the uh, jobs numbers uh, but you, you know the the initial reaction the first minute or two who knows if that's just a knee-jerk reaction or not but what we do know and i'll switch back over and take so you uh, down futures off about 70 uh, and nasdaq 120 s p about 20 russell's off about five but let's go back to our charts out here and just simply uh patterns that we're paying attention to signals that the uh, charts are giving to us in the 15 minute chart here for the es mini it's got a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, wave number seven uh, bottom out there. And uh, we're now getting a potential close above its oscillator and change line. So the level here to be watching, the first level is 41.50. The second level is 41.56. It would be a close above 41.56 for sure that would signal higher price. Now, it's a 15-minute chart, so you got to stay with inside your 15-minute chart time frame. That could mean moving all the way back to when this formed a TD9 count top. That did that at that uh, 6.15 last evening out there. Uh, so that's what the 15-minute chart patterns are showing us. The 10-minute chart, similar to the NQ, in that we haven't seen a two-bar close above the oscillator and change line for quite some time. So we've already got that. And now what price is doing is testing resistance. The first resistance level is the top of its 10-minute profile. And that's at the 41.59 um, level. If price get above that, it's going to make a move to 41. So here's the resistance areas on a 10-minute time frame chart. You've got the 41.59, 41.63, 41.89, and 41.81. What are all those levels? Well, the 41.59 is the top of that profile. The other levels were the TD9 count breakdown resistance series. Now, the cool thing about the TD9 count pattern, there's many cool things, but two or three of those cool things are – Two of those cool things are that it provides you with a level of breakout support and breakdown resistance. And that's where price will normally travel to or at least give you information that, OK, this rally has got some meaning. There's a change in character to it. There's a change in trend to it out there. So those are the levels to be watching on the 10 minute time frame chart. The key level right now is going to be 41.59 out there. Um, nothing else that I see here to pay attention to. So let's go move over and uh, do the deep dive. And let's go take a look at what's going on inside the Dow equity future contract. Uh, just again, just to do a thorough review, there's no questions that I've got yet inside the Tiger's Den. There's nothing. Oh, there's one that has just come in from uh, Alton who wants to take a look at natural gas. So we'll do that here momentarily, Alton. Let's just take a look at the uh, Dow. I'll try to speed this up here. So as I mentioned, the Dow equity futures, when we take a look at the daily time frame, have no resistance out here. Price is trading. Maybe I didn't say that. If I didn't, I'm saying that now. Price is trading above the top of its profile. It was above it yesterday. Um, and so price should continue to move higher out here. Uh, today will form or could form, may form bar number eight of a TD9 count. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. So with regard to the um, with regard to the Dow equity future contract, we're just going to simply switch over and take a look at the 60-minute uh, chart out here. So in its 60-minute chart, we don't have any real topping pattern or topping signal. You see the Dow is actually stronger, certainly stronger than the NQ and the ES mini from a standpoint of price has not even been able to get back to the center of its bullish structure profile for the 60-minute time frame out there. May be an indication, again, of global capital flows that are moving to the U.S. that are out there. Look, we live in a crazy world. I see a number of uh, uh, things that are being posted inside the Tiger's Den, you know, many talking about how the sky is going to fall and so forth. And that may be the case out there. But what we have to understand, what I really want you to understand, and it's because this and, and I'm not saying it begins right now today. Um, but you really want to understand those global flows of capital because that's what we will in, in, in a market that's in a world where things are just chaos. Money still has to flow somewhere. Yeah, it can just all flow out. But at some point in time, it starts to flow in. And if you're over in Europe, um, you know, chances are that that capital starts making its move here to the U.S. OK, so we've got the jobs numbers that have been out for five minutes. We're just taking a look at patterns that are out here. We're looking at the Dow equity future contract. 30 minute chart here does have that T nine count bottoming signal so the cool thing here is that all you really have to do with regard to a market so there's people that are short 
um, you know, people that are long. From a short standpoint, what you want to see is you want to see it close below the TD9 count threshold level. That's at 33,028. If you get that, that's going to suggest that the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, and we're looking at a 30 minute chart here, should go target its breakout level. Well, that breakout level, the most recent one being 32,723. Likewise, and if we take a look at the 30 minute chart, we can see that price was trading below the bottom of its bullish structured profile that began at 7 o'clock this morning. There are more than two bars below that level. So what that tells us is that if this is just a counter trend move, which so far it is, why? Because price got up to the center of that bullish structured profile, also tagged its green oscillator and change line, and is now below that level. So it hasn't proven itself to us to the upside. If price is able to close above that 33,166-ish area, then you should see a move up to the 33,256, 33,234 area. So right now we're kind of in neutral territory. But what's nice is that we've got our line of demarcations to be able to help us understand what the market is communicating to us. And that's courtesy right now of the Dow's 30-minute time frame chart uh, and what it's doing out there. It's 15-minute chart. It's 10-minute chart. It really looks like the 15-minute chart here for the Dow Equity Future contract is the uh, better of the two to look at from an oscillator and change line standpoint. So we can see that price has been below that. Every time price has spiked up, it's found resistance. And I say every time. It's just a few times out here. But this one being the, the most current pattern. Now, this bar here is going to complete in about eight minutes. It's 837 in the morning. No other bottoming signal that I have out here other than price is getting back to its breakout level. That breakout level being 33047. So I would say on a 15 minute basis, if you get two consecutive bars that close above that oscillator and change line, that's generating a message to us. That message is that there should be more rally to come. Um, so I would watch that for those of you that are actually tracking the oscillator and change line out there. So that's what's going on inside these futures, the equity future. We left off the Russell 2000. But uh, we do have a request to take a look at, I believe it was natural gas. Let me get back to this question here. This is from uh, Alton. He says, good morning, Steve. Can you please look at natural gas and see if you think it's it is, think is going to its all-time highs around 13 later on this year? Okay, so let's do a couple of different things out here. Natural gas. Uh, we are in the July contract. So, oops, let me get that started here on the white background charts. But what I'm going to do, because the question here is more bigger picture, more longer term, we're going to change screens here for a moment and go take a look at the bigger picture. We'll come back and take a look at natural gas and give you the play by play as, uh, for that as well. But first, let's get over. If you give me a moment, we'll get to our uh, natural gas charts. As soon as I can get to them. Here we go. So now we take a look at natural gas. We've got a daily, a weekly, monthly, and a quarterly time frame out here. So, of course, this is just looking at the uh, the current contract. So let's Stevie think about this. I'll go to the uh, continuous contract out there and uh, look at a different screen. So stay with us, folks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LL. 
LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, continuous contract here for natural gas, uh, trying to answer the question from Alton, which is, uh, do we think that natural gas will uh, head to the uh, $13 area out there? And the $13 area that he's taking a look at will take us back to the highs from back in July of 2008. There are some higher highs that I have out here on the continuous. I'm not saying that price actually hit this level, 1578, but it's probably somewhere close to that. We'd have to go take a look at the uh, contract back in 2005 to see what that did exact uh, price was out there but uh, so to answer that question uh, do we see and I'm looking at the longer term picture so this is a monthly time frame chart that we're taking a look at Alton the monthly time frame chart has an A to B equals CD to the upside and we can see here that the, along the C to D leg price is on the inside it's on the left side out here price has attained that one to one price level which is 857 we're trading about 863 right now but this is telling us that price wants to make more than a one to one move so the next price target here and I can't answer the question um, is it going to get to 13 or not uh, it has it certainly there's nothing on the charts that suggests that it can't though so that's what I and, and we take a look at this strong move here. It suggests that price wants to go target 994. If price gets above that uh, price projection level, that's on the A to B equal C. That's 1.272. Then we're looking at a move to the 1.618 area. That's at 815. And then the two, the one to two A to B equal CD gets us back to your $13 area. So the monthly chart here said so there's nothing on here that suggests that we can't do that. Now let's switch over to my other white background charts out here. And this uh, gives us a bigger picture as well because we start with the monthly time frame versus the other more intraday charts uh, that we were taking a look at. So here on the monthly chart, we could also see no topping signal, bar number four for the month of uh, June likely to complete. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, we have no topping signal there. Price above the top of its profile, price is above its oscillator and change line. It does have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered and it does have wave seven pattern that will confirm, but you need to close below that oscillator and change line for you to for this to suggest that there is something else that's going on, perhaps a change in trend, with price pulling back to 644 or 497. We don't have that as we speak right now, Alton, but it is worthwhile to be paying attention. And the reason why it's important to pay attention because on the daily time frame, so now we start getting down in the shorter time frames, you do have a valid TD9 count top. The price is below the oscillator and change line. It's just been really kind of moving sideways-ish, so to speak. But the level of support is 761. That's its breakout level of support. If price were to get below that, well, unless there's a new profile that forms, you've got other areas of support, 742, 678, 635. The 30 minute chart shows a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. You're going to get bar number eight of a TD9 count. That's going to complete by uh, nine o'clock. That says you could get a short term top, very short term top on a 30 minute chart between uh, nine and that's just going to be bar eight at uh, nine. So between, really between nine and 11 this morning. And if that does take effect, you should see some type of retrace. But that's just I'm just giving you the the play by play mechanism out here. So get back to your question: Is it possible that uh, natural gas is going to hit the thirteen dollar area? I would say, from a charting standpoint, the answer says yes, yeah, absolutely possible. 
And then if you go to the fundamental aspect, you take a look at our current administration and you take a look at what else is going on over in Europe. I'd say the odds favor yes. But let's take stuff one, one day at a time. We've got the uh, TD9 count on the uh, daily time frame. In order for price to move higher, Alton, you need to see a close above that, uh, abo above that high. And that high we'd be talking about should be, I believe it is going to be uh, 940. Is that correct? Let me hold on here. Let me just make sure. Again, this is a July contract. We're going to be rolling over to August here shortly. But that high is uh, 943. So if you get a close above that, that tells you that uh, price is headed higher. That's the resistance level that was established by that uh, TD9 count. Top was also Rhodes Mentum Indicator Top as well. So Alden, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll look forward to uh, being back with you on uh, Monday. Hector writes in, and Hector wants to take a look at DHR. I believe that is uh, DHR is Horton, is that a home builder out here? So let's go switch to our uh, different eight panel set of charts out here, multi time frame. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put in um, the HR, uh, get the uh, get the information here posted. And DHR, or is that DHR, is that Horton? Is that the donut factory? No, Danaher. I'm not even close. Danaher Corp. So uh, the question goes like this. DHR off the May 12th bottom. Can you please work uh, some A, B, C, D up projections and thoughts? And, and you have a great weekend as well. Thanks uh, so much for writing in. So let's, uh, what do I have up on the screens here? So I'll come back to the A to B equals CD patterns out here. Let's just get a feel for what's the health or non health of, uh, of uh, Danaher Corp. Well, if you look at the monthly time frame, what we have out here is a uh, price just consolidating with inside its monthly profile out there. The key levels of support will be 211.22 and 223.49. The weekly time frame chart, price got back to its TD9 count breakout area. Um, no, no pattern. Uh, oh, I take that back. Wave number seven. That's courtesy of the Chapman wave out there. I uh, said potential rogue wave. That bottom right at its breakout level, 243. You got to love that. Now, price is traded above the uh, top of its uh, profile out here. It's traded above its oscillator and change line. If it closes above that this week, that's a signal that price may want to be making a move up to the 328 area. That's coming from the weekly chart. Let's go look at the daily time frame chart. Daily time frame chart, Hector and Patty, tells us that you've got significant resistance at 277.06. That's a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So if you can get above that, then that says that price should head higher. Higher to where? I'd say the 306.37 level. That would become, well, yeah, 306.37. That would be the area that I would target. Now, you're asking me to take a look at A to B equals CD up patterns. I can see that on the daily time frame chart. So we'll do that. 195-minute chart, no topping pattern, nor on the 130, nor on the 65, nor on the 30-minute, nor on the, uh, well, the 50 minute. says, yeah, you could get a TD9 count top on that short-term time frame. So the signals here overall, what is this telling us? Everything looks pretty good. Dan here looks like it wants to continue to move higher out there. Let's go take a look at the switch over to a different screen where we can draw in those A to B equals CD pennants more easily. And uh, and here you'll see on the left-hand side, you'll see the Danaher chart. You'll also see some trend lines out there. And those trend lines are also resistance levels at this stage. But the A to B equals CD pattern, Hector and Patty, for the daily time frame would look like this. The A point, very easy to identify. That's going to be the low from May the 12th. So there's a couple of A to B equals CDs that you could draw. I'm going to use as the B point out here, the B point being May the 17th high, which ran into resistance at the top of the profile, right where sellers were at. And the C point now would be the low after that, and that would be the May 19th low. So now what we can see is that uh, what price did, so what price did on the uh, uh, two days ago, this is the daily time frame chart, it actually confirmed a sell the D point pattern. And the reason that it did that was a Gartley sell pattern, which failed, by the way, yesterday. But let's take a look at what it's actually done. And this kind of adds to the idea that the uh, strength inside of Danaher. But here is your bearish engulfing candle. That means it engulfed the prior session. That was a pretty easy thing to do since that was a doji candle out there. Nonetheless, it still is a topping signal. What price has not done is you can see it's still above its daily profile. It's above its oscillator and change line, albeit red. But then yesterday's signal, because we closed above the high of that bearish engulfing candle, negated that signal. So this suggests that price wants to move higher. The next price projection level, not that much higher than where we're at right now, Patty. And uh, Hector, 274.59. And above that, 282.24. And then you can see you start running into that descending trend line resistance. So, you know, the other A to B equals CD pattern that you could draw, it's not going to change anything out here, but it would look like this. A point's going to be the same. The B point you could go with here could be May 23rd, and then the C point being the low from May 25th. 
So it doesn't really change things a whole lot. But with inside the A to B equals CD pattern, folks, you have multiple A to B equals CDs that can form. Here's the deal, though. As each day, data is applied to a chart, you have to be willing to change, believe it or not, the A to B equals CD pattern. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back in just a few. Thanks so much for joining us. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, this is uh, 8.54 in the uh, morning. If you're listening live, thanks so much for doing that. Right now at 8.54, you've got U.S. equity futures trading lower. The uh, Dow is off 218 points. The Nasdaq's down 184. That's 1.5%. S&P's off 39. And the E-mini Russell's down uh, 12 points out there. So let's go take a look at the NQ charts out here as we began uh, drilling down into what they were or were not uh, signaling to us. And it's that 60-minute chart that is failing. The TD9 count pattern is failing out here. Now, there's still six minutes left in the session, but uh, this is trading below the TD9 count bottom. Pattern that was established by the bar following bar number nine. This suggests lower price. 
But the question is lower price to where? And that's really a great question out here. And if I'm looking for signals out here for some type of support level, well, I come back to that five hour time frame chart. So the five hour time frame chart, which has formed a new profile that is below price, price is testing that level right now. So that's the key area to watch, and that's at 12,693. If price does close below 12,693, then the price target for the NQ should be the 12,593 level, could even be as low as 12,492. But right now, even though we've got a failure on the 60 minute time frame chart, what price is doing, it's holding a key level of support out there. So watch that. Now, we'll switch over real quickly here. Take a look at the other 60 minute time frame charts. Although on the ES Mini, it was the 30 minute chart. That was showing the TD9 count bottom. I, I believe it's failing, but uh, I'd have to go back and take a look at it. But nonetheless, here are the 60-minute time frame charts. So as we take a look at them, the uh, Russell 2000, talk about a diverging market. If the Russell 2000, in five minutes from now, actually four minutes and about uh, 40 seconds or so, closes above 1884, even Stephen, we're at 1884 as we speak right now, its TD9 count bottom will hold. But if there's a close below 1884, then it's joining the message here of the NQ. Now, we didn't get a chance to take a look at the Russell 2000 charts, look where its area of support is. Now, on the 60-minute time frame chart, there are TD9 count bottoms that might form hours from now, because you're only in bar number seven, which closes at nine. So you got eight, nine, so about uh, within the next three hours. So between nine and uh, 12 out there. Hey, folks, stay tuned. You've got Tommy O'Brien up next with the morning market kickoff. Of course, if you're listening at the normal programming time, your favorite polar bears up next. Have a fantastic Friday. Be safe out there. Take care, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.